I've been getting a lot of phone calls from him and my parents saying my wife is a loose woman and she needs to cover herself. Am I the asshole for not making my wife cover up at home? So my brother, 28 male, came over with his wife yesterday and spent the night with my wife, 27 female, and myself. It was worth mentioning that I come from a Muslim family and my wife does not. Ooh. When my brother and his wife arrived, my wife was just getting home from work and she was wearing scrubs and her name badge. While I made polite conversation with my brother and my sister-in-law, my wife went to change clothes. It is also worth mentioning that my wife has tattoos, piercings, dyed hair, and stretched ears. Very much a stereotypical goth girl. When she was done, she came back into our living room in a tank top and a pair of shorts. My brother averted his eyes, but my sister-in-law couldn't stop looking at my wife. My wife has a tattoo from her thigh to her ankle on her left leg and a tattoo on her calf on her right leg. My wife finally noticed and asked my sister-in-law, like the tattoo? To which she simply blushed. My wife smiles and tells her, you're fine, I'm used to the stairs. You forget how many tattoos and piercings I have. My sister-in-law and brother both asked her how many. She has seven piercings and almost 20 tattoos. The evening continues and during dinner, the conversation turns to my wife's tattoos. My sister-in-law asks if she's planning for more and my wife tells her yes and she is currently working on a full back piece. My brother rolls his eyes and continues to eat. Shortly after dinner, we're getting ready for bed and it's worth mentioning that my wife sleeps in a shirt and PJ pants. At no point is my wife nude or semi-nude. Before we go to bed, my brother comes into our bedroom and my wife is in the process of having me put tattoo lotion into the tattoo on her back. She has her shirt pulled up in the back, but her arms are over her chest, covering her breasts. My brother sees this and runs from the room. My wife is embarrassed, but I tell her not to worry about it as it's his fault for not knocking. Once I'm done, I go out to see what my brother needed. He tells me, I shouldn't see your wife in a state of undress. You need to be a better husband and tell her to cover up. My wife did not need to see her body. I did not need to see her body. I tell him he should have knocked and it's not my fault or hers. He and his wife left early the next morning. I've been getting a lot of phone calls from him and my parents saying my wife is a loose woman and she needs to cover herself. I tell them she doesn't and to leave her alone. My parents and brother now want an apology from us, so am I the asshole? Oh, okay. Uh, this was kind of kind of weird one for me because as a practicing Muslim, so I understand both sides, okay? Okay, I think you guys need to set boundaries, right? If it makes them, it shouldn't, if it makes your brother and his wife uncomfortable, I think it'd be nice you don't have to. I would have that conversation because they're conservative and they're Muslims and stuff. I'd be like, hey, wife, I love you. There's nothing wrong with you. That's all that matters that I care about you. But if it's okay when my family comes over, just to try to cover up, just to be respectful. There's nothing wrong with it, right? If you're okay with it, that's fine, right? But I can understand why I feel like it would kind of bother me if I saw my brother and his wife like that. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest because, right? And so like, it just kind of goes against our practices and to see your brother do that kind of stuff. It's like, it would bother you. But I think you're also, your brother made a really big deal. He shouldn't have barged into your room. It's not like he saw her butt ass naked. Like, he literally went into your bedroom. So, what what was free game at that point? Like, it's not your fault. She sounds like a really nice person. I just don't know. Like, it's just, ah. ah. My friend is constantly late to everything. Be it work-related or fun activities, she will always be at least 15 to 20 minutes late. This week, she was supposed to give a seminar at the university, which is a crucial part of her PhD program. She asked me if I could give her a ride at work that day. I told her, sure, but that I was picking her up at 8 a.m. and she must be there exactly at 8 a.m. The morning of her seminar, I drove to her place and got there at 7.55 and texted her that I was there. And she told me she would be out in just a minute. At 8, there was no indication that she would come out. So at 8.01... I drove off. At around 8.20, she called me asking me where I was. She then begged me to come back to pick her up as her seminar is at 9 a.m. I feel like I could have went back and picked her up in this scenario since it wouldn't have been detrimental to me. On the other hand, I feel like this should have been a wake-up call for her chronic lateness. My husband's company recently chose him to attend a conference in Miami. The company told them that they were allowed to bring their spouses, but that they wouldn't be springing for plane tickets for us. But when we went to the website to buy tickets, he asked if I'd be okay with flying coach, even though he'd be flying first class on the way there. This really, really bothered me. I understood that a first class ticket for me would strain our budget a bit, but what kind of man lives it up in first class while his wife sits in coach? I asked him just that and he responded, come on, I'm taking you along on my work trip. I earned my first class seat by working hard. It's my reward. But I insisted that if we couldn't truly afford a first class seat for me, that he as a gentleman should give up his seat for me. We argued, but he ultimately agreed to give me his seat. 
We had a good time in Miami, but he's been a little mad at me since. I think he's being a baby and that he should have put his wife's comfort above his own, especially since he made the choice to be cheap. My fiance and I are getting married in December. I hate to admit that wedding planning has been an absolute nightmare. His mom wasn't willing to agree on most things and my fiance said that since he's her only son, then I should respect and appreciate this vision she has for the wedding and how it should be. She picked a dress that she liked so much and said that she always pictured her son's bride in it. I apologized and thanked her for her vision, but told her that I had already decided on a dress that I had envisioned myself wearing at my wedding. She got all pissy because of it apparently. Ben must have told my fiance because he came home in the evening ranting about how I made his mom upset and turned down her help in choosing the wedding dress and excluded her from this process. He said that I should consider the dress his mom wanted me to buy, especially knowing that both dresses weren't that much different anyway. Yesterday I came home and found out that he had returned my wedding dress and replaced it with the one his mom wanted. I called him and he was straightforward about what he did and why he did it. I lost it and started screaming at him. He asked me to calm down and really give this dress a chance. I refused to even listen. I screamed at him without giving him a chance to speak. I then went to stay with one of my friends and he kept calling and calling, then texting, saying that I overreacted and it's his wedding too, so it wasn't cool how I screamed at him. My dad said that this isn't worth ruining my relationship with my in-laws for. He suggested I wisen up and go with the flow, but is it too much for me to be able to pick my own wedding dress without being guilted about it just to keep the peace? My husband's ex is my sister-in-law's best friend. She is also friends with my husband. And I don't really mind because I know they are from the same town and they grew up together. My husband and his sister lost both their parents in a car accident two years ago. So all they have is each other. I was six months pregnant when my sister-in-law lost her job. She couldn't pay her rent anymore and had nowhere to stay. So she moved in with us. Now, since my husband's ex is her best friend, she came to visit her at our house almost every weekend. And like I said before, I was never threatened by her because I knew my husband was faithful and what he had with her was in the past. Now, two months after my sister-in-law moved in, my husband told me his ex came over one weekend and tried to seduce him. He didn't give in to her and he wanted me to know what had happened. I guess his ex thought I was pregnant and bloated so it would be easier to seduce him in my condition. I got very angry and I wanted to confront her but my husband told me not to and that he has handled everything. He said she would never try that with him again. I told him I never wanted to see her in our house again. I told my sister-in-law what had happened later that night. And I couldn't believe my ears when she told me it was not a big deal. She told me she was soulmates with her best friend. And something like this cannot tear them apart. I was shocked to hear this from her. I told her I don't care about her relationship with my husband's ex. I just don't want to see her in my house again. She just chuckled and went to her room. Two weeks after this conversation, I came back home to see my sister-in-law with my husband's ex in the living room together. I immediately asked my husband's ex to get out. But my sister-in-law objected and said if I sack her best friend, she would also leave the house. So I asked her to pack her things and leave my house. I only had a few weeks to my due date and I didn't want anything to stress me out. My husband is her only family and I feel guilty for throwing her out. Am I the asshole? This follower needs your opinions, babes. Please drop some below. I'm the asshole for refusing to move out of my apartment. During this time, I've had two different roommates. My current roommate has been great until now. She's in a long-term relationship and over Christmas she got proposed to. Now they want to live together, but they both approached me and asked if her fiancé could take over my lease and for me to find a new place as soon as possible. I have a few problems with this because I feel like they should find a new place together because I've lived here longer. I also told V a few months ago that I spoke to the landlord about our lease and how I'll probably be living alone next time because I can now afford it. And at that time, she agreed and said her boyfriend would look for a place so that they could live together. I told her this, but she said that they started looking for a new place and everything was way too expensive, so it made more sense for me to move out than her. I refused and told her that she could always ask the landlord if there's units available for them in our building. She started cussing me out. And now her fiancé and their friends are harassing me about it. There's about four months left on the lease, so I'm just going to ignore them, but when I spoke to my mom about it, she thinks I should let them have the apartment since they need to start saving for a wedding. So I'm just wondering, am I in the wrong here as it is my apartment.